Where I live in Texas, we have very, very little water and trees. This is the little piece we're going to be painting, but it started off a little bigger. I first painted this scene with a charcoal underpainting, which you can see here. But in the process, I decided to go ahead and crop it. Now this is UART paper that I had professionally mounted at my framers with some acid-free foam core. But it was really easy to trim off just with a self-healing mat and a utility knife. Mainly the thing that I think draws us to marsh scenes, even if you are you live around marshes, you see nothing but marsh paintings, you have a lot of opportunity to draw your viewers in with the simplicity of a marsh. It's usually fairly flat horizon, maybe some great dark values in the shadows of the grasses and in the distance. You also have wonderful reflections and you have the opportunity to work on compositions, especially S-curves. So let's get started on this simple marsh scene. Here's the reference photo we'll be going off of. It's gorgeous with this beautiful grasses and the reflections in the water. I'm going to be omitting the distant boats and dock. So I have sketched it out. You can see the upper image right here and my mounted UART, which is um, about a six by nine. Of course, the first thing I want to do is apply my middle point, and that's really just so I can look at the middle point, refer to my reference, see, you know, eyeball where the middle of that image is, and that way it just helps me place the elements in a, you know, more accurately with the photo or sometimes with my thumbnail sketch. I usually always put in the horizon line first. Um, in this case, since I'm omitting that boat and that the dock off in the distance, I really just want to simplify this. That's what we're going for for this lesson is simplification of this landscape. And really, there's not much more simple um, than just a gorgeous marsh with those really clean, easy lines, the grasses, the horizon line, and the clouds. Whenever I'm initially sketching in my major shapes, which is what I'm working on right now, I don't want to draw the edges of the marsh. I want to just indicate um, different angles that the marsh will be at, different points um, in that marsh, because it's gonna make it less static if I keep those areas fairly loose. The first thing right here is I am going to be doing this underpainting with charcoal. This is pure black charcoal. This is going to help me with that moodier quality that this photo reference and this memory really bring back for me. It was twilight. We were walking on this beautiful boardwalk. I was with my family and my children were running ahead. The, the, the light was incredible. There were um, just, I just have some really fond memories of this, but it was also pretty dark, um, overcast. There were, um, there were clouds, you know, blocking the sunlight. And so it wasn't this really bright, shiny day on the marsh. It was, it was just this beautiful, moody memory. And so in order to, you know, represent that, I want to begin my underpainting in a moody way. And what, what is moodier than a charcoal underpainting? This is pure black. We're going to be using alcohol with this to create that underwash um, and to help build our values. Now I'm washing the charcoal in with some rubbing alcohol, also known as surgical spirits. If you are new to using alcohol washes and you're not sure if it works on your paper, just do a test sample. Um, for my paper, this, this dries really quickly. It doesn't buckle. I'm using my glazing brush here. This is just a synthetic, flat, very soft bristled brush, and it just moves the charcoal around. If I'm using pastel, it moves the pastel around really beautifully and very evenly. This is a little different effect than um, the fan brush that I sometimes use, which I'm gonna pull in as well here in a second. I'm just being very careful here to build the values and the reflections 
accurately to not only my reference photo, but also my sketch that I made in my sketchbook. I'm going to show that a little bit more at the end of the video, so make sure that you watch all the way through and I'll show you that those, um, those value studies that I worked on and um, another charcoal sketch that I worked on. I like to keep a lot of the water, especially whenever I'm working on a charcoal underpainting, I like to keep the water area pretty raw. You can see that I pulled in my fan brush here to help me with those, those grasses and that texture and I'm pulling not only you know that charcoal down into the water, but I'm also pulling it up to represent the sides of the grasses. We're not just looking at the tops of the grasses, we're also looking at the sides. Um, especially in this type of scene, I was standing on a boardwalk here, so I'm kind of above the scene um, in a way and looking down at it a little bit, but also across. And so I'm wanting to make sure that that effect remains keeping a lot of that paper where especially where the water is is um, where the main reflections that i want keeping that paper raw and so that's going to help me build that glow I work really hard in the underpainting stage because I really firmly believe that the stronger the values in your underpainting, the better the finished painting will be. I, um, you know, like to even think that, you know, if, if um, I wanted to, this could be my finished piece. That's how strongly I want my values to read on my paper. I'm using really soft, um, very just gentle brush marks here. I'm trying to build a sense of distance and also just character off, you know, off on the horizon line, um, making sure that the values in the, you know, in all of the grasses all the way back that they make sense, blending anything that is too harsh. Um, I also want to build some um, clouds in the sky. And so I'm really just using the residue that's already on the brush to help me form some cloud shapes. In this instance, I am pretty much omitting that really strong line of grasses as they go all the way across the front of the reference photo. You can see that I've, I've kind of just limited them to that far right corner that I'm working on right now. I really like to open up my waterscapes, any type of water. I think of them as a pathway into my painting. And if it is closed off, if there's, if there's a lot of just detail and stuff right in front, it blocks my viewers from being able to enter the painting. Um, and so I really always try to open up my paths and my water, thinking of my water as a path. I'm almost done here. I've spent a lot of time on this, but this honestly is some of my very, very favorite parts of painting are these beginning stages where you can just see something come alive. You can imagine it as a landscape. It's just really fun. Okay, I waited for it to dry a little bit. Magic of film, it's already dry. And I am going to reapply some charcoal here just to further establish the darkest darks that I want in this painting. I don't want to, I want my S curves. You can see how I'm, I'm creating a, a you know, a very um, subtle path as this S curve goes back off in the distance. I don't want to draw a line of reflection. I want to imply that there is water that's bending around this curve. Also going to strengthen some of the distant trees with the same charcoal, really just kind of making up 
um, my my trees at this point. You know, in, in the photo reference, you can see there's there's a bunch of trees, there's a bunch of boats, and there's a there's a you know kind of some messy um, there's a messy boardwalk, and I like those things, but that's not what this painting is about. I really just wanted to focus on the marsh, and so really, I'm making up a lot of the tree shapes off in the distance. They're just very very simple marks to indicate that yes, there are trees way off um, way off over there. <laughs> Okay, it's time to bring in some color now, and I am working, um, usually whenever I work, um, same thing that I do with, with any, any landscape, I work dark to light, usually cool to warm. This is a spruce blue new pastel that I'm applying to bridge the gap between that really deep dark black and then the greens that I'm going to be applying on, you know, that are going to be representative of the very tip tops of this, these marsh grasses. Now I'm moving to a cooler green. Uh, this is a very dark, cool green. This is a Jack Richeson um, hand rolled pastel. And I am, you know, there are those very warm greens. I do want to brighten up my my marsh grasses a little bit, but I don't want to brighten them up too soon. And so once again, I often think of bridging the gaps. What, um, you know, be very, very gentle, be very, very gradual about your value shifting. The softer the shift, the softer the painting. Um, and the more, you know, the, the more nuance it will have, it will look a little less garish if you're pretty gentle about your value shifts. So now I'm moving to a slightly warmer green. Very, very similar value though. I like to, you know, change my temperatures, my, my color temperatures, um, almost as gradually as changing my, my values. I'm using a really soft touch here. That's a Giro that I'm using. I love Giro. And if this is a great, very warm green. Marshes, you know, the strokes are fairly simple, um, especially in this, in this type of scene. I'm not going to be painting a ton of grass details. I want this to be a very, very simple, color study of this, you know, this day that I remember. Um, I do want to lose a little bit of that paper texture and that just that oatmeal color peeking through. And so I'm using some pipe foam to just whisk that pastel in. I'm really not trying to blend as much as I'm trying to just push it into the paper a little harder. Okay, I'm bringing in a lighter and still warm green. Really just being careful here, using very sideways, horizontal strokes. I don't want to do, I don't, I don't want to, you know, make a lot of little tiny lines um, in those distant grasses. I'm trying to be very, very careful to paint more of the mass of grasses versus individual grasses. I want to avoid individual grasses here. I'm using another Richeson here, really layering different greens. If I, you know, the question I probably get more than any question is, for one, you know, what are the best pastels to use? And two, what are the best greens? Um, everybody, it's universal. People love greens and the greens are hard to work with. I probably have more greens than anything else in my palette box, even though I live in an area that is very distinctly ungreen. <laughs> I'm mostly using harder pastels here though. That's a Terry Ludwig. I've used Richesons, I've used a Giro, I've used New Pastel. Um, those, you know, I find them easier to work with. I prefer working with harder pastels, um, you know, more the medium grits until closer to the end. 
if I work too soft too quickly, I find that my paintings get a little mushy looking to where I feel like they're, they, they don't have um, any, any kind of bite to them. It's harder to make those, those really juicy marks with a soft pastel, at least for me. And so if I want to glaze and be very gentle and careful with my marks, that's when um, I'm working with a little bit harder pastels. I'm lightening up the pastel a little bit. You can see in the reference photo that there are some cloud reflections at the forefront of this, of this marsh you know, pathway. And so that's what I'm putting in now. I'm just pulling. I'm wanting to keep some of those reflections that you can see um, how I pull that charcoal down. I'm wanting those to look like reflections of the grasses. And so now my job, you know, I have to be pretty careful here not to cover up that charcoal, um, at least areas that I, I want to show. This is also a Terry Ludwig. This is from his Best of the Blues collection. I think the Best of the Blues is one of the best um, pastel sets that you can purchase, especially for skies and water. If you don't have that set, you can um, curate that set by going to terryludwig.com. This is not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> you can curate your set by going to terryludwig.com, or I have the Best of the Blues linked here in this blog post. Here I'm making the decision of where I want there to be a glint of light off um, in kind of a bend in this marsh. I want to um, indicate you know, that the water is going back an S-curve, but I don't want to draw that S-curve. So I need to figure out you know, where is that slight glint of water. I'm also really looking at the reference photo here carefully and seeing how as, the, as that, the, the, those marsh grasses bend around, there is darkness above the um, tip tops of the um, area that's closer to us, if you can see that in the reference photo. And so I want to indicate that. I don't want to blend those two areas together too much. I want it to look like a path. I think that I need to reorder that pastel that I'm using. It's so tiny. It's like a little sliver. <laughs> If you are painting along or planning on painting along, I would always suggest you watch these before you start to paint along because I am going to change some things. I mean, I introduced this by showing you the two pieces that I had trimmed off. Um, the foreground grasses that I'm working kind of around right now, I gradually kind of lose the values that I had intended for them to be. And so as we go on in this piece, I'm going to be um, kind of reworking that area. I just think it gets a little too fussy. Um, I liked the darker values that I initially had. And so, um, like I said, if you're painting along, um, just on that specific area especially, um, I want you to hold back and wait and watch to see what happens. I think a lot of times um, artists and students especially think and assume that professional artists, you know, that every stroke you make from beginning to end is exactly accurate. Um, and that is just absolutely 100% not the case. There are constant adjustments that happen. You, you know, your, your marks, like right now, I'm kind of adjusting the, um, you know, the size of that mark I made. I'm taking in my pencil here and just using the pencil um, as a very, very fine line to help me, you know, change shapes, change sizes. Sometimes I'll use a pastel pencil. Sometimes I'll use a palette knife. Um, sometimes you, you know, brush some pastel off. There's always adjustment, but that is what makes, for one thing, pastel such a wonderful medium because it is so versatile and it's pretty um, simple or at least um, it seems easier to fix. There are, um, you know, because it remains fluid 
on the paper, as long as you're not fixing it with, you know, a ton of fixative, you can brush off. You can, you know, you can put an alcohol wash back over it if, if it's a paper that can handle it. There's a lot of things that you can do to your work to help fix problems. I mean, look at my painting from last, um, you know, from last month where I, you know, went straight back onto that paper and um, completely changed the piece that, you know, I, I painted that painting five years ago and then I was able to fix it. And that is the, the power of pastel. It's fantastic for that. So don't be afraid to make mistakes, but also be confident in yourself that you can fix things and you can change things. Okay, I've been working on the water and also in the sky and I just applied. Usually, you know, sometimes I think, oh, I'm gonna try to make my clouds very colorful, but I don't really want my clouds to be the center of attention here. So I use just a, you know, a very, very neutral gray, pure, true gray, kind of a coolish gray um, pastel. And then I also put in some very, very warm green as that color on the horizon line. Now I'm putting in blues up in the sky and down in the water. I really always want to kind of represent what's up in the sky with what's in the water. And that's another way to bring a really cohesive look to your paintings. I'm putting some of that same very, very light, the one of the lightest value warm greens that I have, Put it. that's the same color that I put in the clouds. I am pu putting a little bit of that down into the water as well. Kind of blending, softening, pulling that pastel with my pinky finger just really gently to soften the edges of those trees off in the distance. You can see how I'm just very, in almost a linear fashion, scumbling a little bit of that very light pastel over that charcoal. That really helps indicate reflections. It helps you um, make, make it look like, you know, there's water sitting on top of here, but there's also some darkness that exists in the water. Wanting to correct a little bit of that bend bring some darker blue down into the water. And also if I'm gonna add it down to the water, I wanna add it up in the sky. Plus it just kind of helps frame the piece a little bit more if you have some darkness above and around. It's you know almost a, in, a, in a way kind of a vignette effect. going to brighten up the, the tops of the grasses just a little bit by scumbling in, once again, a just slightly lighter green. Really making very soft marks here. Not a lot of detail. Really focusing on the shapes of this landscape. Okay, I didn't like that foreground grass. I just got it, it just got too fussy. It got too light in value. Um, I really wanted to indicate more darkness and I wanna simplify um, those grasses. And so I'm just brushing it off, tapping it off, and I'm reapplying dark charcoal. I'm gonna just get that value back the way I wanted it. Now I'm cutting in that blue back into those grasses. I washed that charcoal in again with alcohol. You can kind of see the wash um, form. And I'm using the side of my pastel to make small marks to indicate where, you know, where there are, where I guess they're not sky holes, they're water holes in the grasses. That's just going to help that shape be a little stronger. Um, and that's, that's what I wanted to tell. That's the story I want to tell with this painting.
Okay, so here is where I basically ended the piece. And I want to show you really quickly my value sketches and the reasons that I decided, you know, ultimately to crop this painting. I wanted to save it. I still didn't like those grasses, although I did like the value. So let's look at my value sketches. Okay guys, before we go, I wanted to show you some of these value studies that I have been working on in my new sketchbook. I always love getting a beautiful full new sketchbook. This is the first time I've gotten one this large and I am in love with it. I'm using these Copic sketch markers in gray for the studies and also my Tombow markers. They each have their own quality. I love the um, chisel tip on these for making those chunky marks, but I love the way that these blend. Also, the Copic markers do bleed through a little bit of the paper. You can see that they bleed through a little bit. So in this instance, I'm leaving a sheet of blank paper between each sketch. So for this week's lesson, I decided to focus on this composition right here, and you can see it. And I did, this is all charcoal. You can see that it is washed in with um, alcohol. There's very minimal, there's very minimal residue coming off. Here is the finished small piece, and you can see that I did trim off quite a bit. The reason I decided to do that, whenever I was painting, you know, I was talking about how I, I, I'm trying to get away from, tr from adding too much fussy detail, especially in foreground grasses. In this small of a piece, we don't need a lot of detail up here. All we need is the correct value. And in this instance, you can see that my values were fairly dark. In the painting process though, sometimes your, you know, your choices, you are in the moment and you can lose some of those dark values. And so when I added it, it created a shape that was a little too dominant for this long line. So to fix it, I just trimmed it off and I am much more pleased. This is a beautiful S curve, how it flows around nice, a nice reflection just off of the center point that points towards this other distant line. Instead of drawing that line, I wanna just suggest that this marsh is flowing around. I'm really pleased with this little tiny study. It's about six by seven. I could probably even take another inch off of it if I wanted to frame this more standard size, more six by six. But I love the color palette. This is exactly how I remember it. It was a beautiful moody day out on Shem Creek. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I certainly had fun with these marsh studies and these scenes. Um, look for more marsh paintings this month and I will see you around.